Get in, we're gonna get in, we're gonna get out. Y'all, like, like I tell y'all, nine o'clock, Monday through Saturday, we're gonna roll. Tomorrow, 11 o'clock, we're gonna go in the church. Church, we're gonna roll. Every day, we're gonna get this Bible. Every day. Preach it on a Sunday, break it down on a Monday, teach it Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, run it on a Friday, recap it on a Saturday. Because guess what? You attend church on Sunday, some of us the same day, we done forgot the message. So Monday, you know we really don't know. Come Tuesday, we really don't know. Thursday, so guess what? One of my members, her mother passed, so I'm gonna go support my member. I'm gonna go to the funeral in the rain. It don't matter, it could be rain, sleet, snow. Man, nothing don't stop the word of God. All that old stunt and all that old faking like it's raining and we can't do this and that. Guess what? We gonna do this word. We gonna go back in that 25th chapter of Matthew. We gonna tie it into that sixth chapter of Revelation. Go back in that 14th chapter of Revelation. Come off of that 17th chapter. Go in that 20th chapter of Revelation. Just walk it. Yesterday I got a lot of phone calls. Pastor Mike, I didn't know Ezekiel had a wife. Yeah. And his wife died. And God told Ezekiel, you better not cry. You better not moan. Oh my God. We run out there talking about he that finding a wife. Nobody in the Bible ever found no wife. But yet God told Hosea, said, but get going and marry her. Well, she's a prostitute. She's a whore. Man, Mary, and you better be in love with her. So all this noise we've been making about this Bible, say, bro, really? Then we run out there talking about, we the church. Show it to me in the Bible. Show it to me in the Bible. But yet, but yet, but, 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 but. We've been listening to people say stuff. Really, people? How many of us really go back and look? How many of us really go back and read? with somebody to say it, to make sure. Give us a half a verse and tell us that's what it say. Hold up, babe. And what that's about. Hold up, babe. And then what that mean? Come on, baby. Come on, baby. But since nobody never was going to check nobody, we'd have been continuing on going, believing that same foolishness. Say, bro, we want to talk about everybody else. When we going to start checking these preachers? When we going to start checking these bishops? When we going to start checking them? Or we just believe anything they say? That's why we don't know nothing. We just believe in what they say, like they so right. Well, who made them God? Who made them God? Not God. God say, I'm God and God all by myself. So when I pick that book up, say, bro, that's not that what that's about. Say, bro, that don't go like that. Say, bro, give me a better understanding. Because when I go in Ephesians and it tells me about spots and blemish, one talking about the church like that. That was talking about his glory. Why? Because I go back in the book of uh, Exodus. They had to get a lamb. Same way. Say, bro, can somebody please start teaching us what this Bible is really about? Because that's what we've we, we been learning. Say, bro, you don't go like that, babe. Don't go like that. We're going to go back in the 25th chapter of Matthew. Why? Because it all started Sunday. What was Sunday? Resurrection Sunday. I say, say, God. I ain't about to be hollering about no he rose, he rose. Say, God. We done heard that forever. When we going to get our lives right. But yet he rose. He rose for us to act the way we acting in the church. And then, man, really? 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 If we the church, why we treat people like that? If we the church. According to the scripture, nah, we a temple that the church is housed in. We not the church. Why? Because the church, according to the book of Acts, is the first fruit. I'm going to go on John, right? Because somebody ran up on one of my members and tried to confuse my members. Say, bro, one thing about Pastor Mike, I'm going play with my members. Don't play with my members. We partners, baby. So if they call their pastor, and they act, because they can call their pastor. Y'all probably can't call y'all pastor, but they can call their pastor. And when they call their pastor, they're going to, Pastor Mike, what this is about? Pastor Mike, what that's about? And I explained it, okay? Now, watch this. We're going to go back in John. After Jesus rose from the dead, because this is what it was about. 
the resurrection, after he rose from the dead, it was weeks. And one week passed, he ran into Mary. Another week passed, he did this. Another week passed, now he did it with Peter and them. But watch this. When he rose from the dead, he's sitting around with them, right? He's talking to them. And the Bible said he blew. He blew on them. And the Holy Spirit was in them. Stop. 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 Watch this. Go back in the Old Testament. Look at, look at, look, look at, look at Samson. Look at David. Look, look, look at Solomon. Look at a lot of men of God in the Old Testament that did the work of God. In other words, the Spirit of God will go on them. The Spirit of God will go up on them while they did the work of God. And once they did God's work, the Spirit left them. So watch this. According to Acts, the Spirit had not came yet. But according to when Jesus, after he rose and he was with them, he blew on them. So they received the same spirit that they was receiving in the Old Testament. Why? Because the spirit that Jesus was talking about, which was the Holy Ghost, had not came yet. Come here, Bible. Brother the mic go out there behind his memory. Don't just tell my memory no anything. I'm going to read it and explain it. Come here, Matthew. We're going to go back in the 25th chapter, chapter of Matthew because that's where it started. That is where it all started. Why? Because guess what? Jesus said, check this out. When I was naked, you clothed me. When I was hungry, you fed me. When I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. When I was sick, you came to see about me. When I was in prison, you came unto me. So they asked Jesus. For the Bible says, the righteous ones ask Jesus. That's what the scriptures say. The righteous ones ask Jesus, when was you hungry? When was you naked? When was you thirsty? When were you sick? When were you in prison? He said, whatever you did unto the least of them, you did it to me. Then he turned around and the Bible says, then he was talking to those other people, the other people. Who were the other people? Because the parable is about the sheep and the goat. The sheep and the goat. The sheep were the righteous one. Deal with the goats. So the goat asked him, Jesus, when were you hungry? When were you naked? When were you thirsty? When were you sick? When were you in prison? Jesus says, what you did not do to the least of them, you didn't do it unto me. So depart from me, you workers of iniquity. For many are called, but few are chosen. But you know, we take that and make it as the pastor or the bishop. Many are called, few are chosen. No, that's speaking to all of us. Why? Because you're either going to fall in a category of you did do it or you didn't do it. So don't try to put all that on no one person because he's going to ask you, whatever you did to the least of them, you did it to me. What you didn't do to the least of them, you didn't do it unto me. But, but Jesus, I'm not the pastor. You know, I, I, I ain't going to referring to no pastor. I, well, show me in the scripture that's referring to the pastor. Many are called, but few are chosen. Cold guy. Cold guy. Cold guy. But yet we make this Bible say whatever we want to say. Whatever we want it to say. And y'all run out there believing that. Really? Really? So my thing is, if this was Resurrection Sunday, right? I say, say, Jesus, hold up, baby. You check Peter, right? Three weeks later, right? But the Bible said it was like the third week, right? Okay. You died, Jesus. But when you check Peter, that was about something that happened before you died. How you remember that, Jesus? How you remember what Peter did and you died? But yet they say, when we die, we won't remember. Okay. Go in the sixth chapter of Revelation. For in the sixth chapter of Revelation, it tells us about all of those who have been martyred around the altar of God. They asking God, how long? Oh Lord, how long? How long will it be for you avenge, not revenge, but avenge those on earth? God said, oh, don't worry about it, babe. I'm going to get them. Because the number has not been fulfilled yet. There are many more people going to die. Y'all just chill out. Take your robe. It's going to be all right. Wait, stop again. How 
in the world, if these people died, they know what's going on on Earth. When they jokers and told us, you won't remember. Come on, baby. Somebody been lying somewhere. Somebody been lying somewhere. Either you didn't know or you was lying. It's all in the book. It's all right here in this book. So now, now, me, I'm like, say, God, baby, give me the game. Could look like him, he don't know. Her, she don't know. God, when these people die, do these people really know? Mike, it's in the book. It's in the book. Wow. I say I'm gonna use you in a minute, babe. This recap, this recap right here. We just gonna recap it. I ain't gonna be long. I'm gonna run to the funeral. In the rain. <laughs> in the rain. We don't care about that. Nothing, nothing don't stop nothing. Watch this. Matthew 25. This is all I want to hear God say. I don't care about nothing else. This is all I want to hear God say. Watch this. Matthew 25, 22. He also had received two talents, came and said, Lord, thou deliver me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, well done, well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter into thou joy of the Lord. But you know what we're going to tell y'all? If you be faithful and cut your grass at that little house you got, God going to give you a mansion. Say, bro, stop lying. Stop lying. When he said this, this is talking about what's going to take place in the 20th chapter of Revelation. During a thousand years of the millennium. What takes us back in the fifth chapter of Ephesians. To give us an understanding about what? Without spots, without blemish. What takes us in the sixth chapter of Ephesians. And it tells us that we wrestle against not flesh and blood. But principalities and wickedness. Well, wait. But what takes us in the third chapter of Ephesians and tell us that principalities is in high places. Hold up. Stop. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up, Bible. Hold up, Bible. Sixth chapter of Ephesians. We wrestle not against the flesh and blood, but principalities, right? I got that. Third chapter of Ephesians, you tell me that principalities is heavenly places. Okay, well, somebody explain that to me then. Can somebody? Because we quoting it. Oh, we wrestle not against the flesh and blood, but principalities. Okay. Paul, in the third chapter, said it's heavenly. In the sixth chapter, he says wicked. What happened? I'll wait. What happened? Since y'all running out there with one verse, what happened? When God created this place, principalities were in heavenly places. But because of what Adam did, now it's wicked. Boom. Watch this. So in the 25th chapter of Matthew, he's letting them know, you were faithful over a little, you're going to be a ruler over much. When? In the millennium. Why? Because in the 20th chapter of Revelation, it speaks about sitting on thrones. It, says, it talks about us being in judgment. That's a promise. Well, you know we tell y'all in the church? If you be faithful over this, God go. Really, bro? Really, bro? If I'm lying, come show me. If I'm lying, come show me. Say, bro, they done messed up up in these churches. So we run around here thinking this going to happen and that's going to happen. It don't even go like that. Give me the whole story. Give me the whole book. So now when I'm in the 25th chapter, Matthew, I bag it all the way up. Hold up, man. Hold up, hold up, Matt. When you first started, Matthew, you were talking about the, the, the one that didn't have all in their lamp, right? Referring to the kingdom of God, right? Okay. Then after you get that parable, Jesus, now you talk about the one that had five, the one that had two, that had one, right? Hold up, Jesus. Bag it up in the, the fourth chapter. When I go to the 24th chapter of Matthew, now you're breaking it down about the red horse, the white horse, the black horse, the pale horse. Now you're telling us what's going to happen at the end of the time, right? But before you tell us about the end of the time, you tell us about the times of sorrow. Okay, well, back me up in the 23rd chapter, Matthew. In the 23rd chapter, Matthew, you say, Jesus, you say, watch them. Don't be like them, Mike. See them Pharisees and them scribes? Don't be like them. Don't be running around here calling no man father. Because you don't have not one father, and that's God, which is in heaven. But we, that's my spiritual son. That's my spiritual daughter. That's my, man, I wish I would play with y'all like that. Cold game. 
cold guy. What takes me to the 22nd chapter of Matthew? Because in the 22nd chapter of Matthew, now we look at a wedding feast. Whoa! Wait! Whoa! 22nd is the wedding feast. 23rd, you say, observe. 24th, you put us on what's going to happen on the end of the time. The 25th, you say, okay, I'm going to give you the all, which is the Holy Spirit. I'm going to give you the talents, which is gifts. Oh, love Jesus. Well, yet, all of here you say, well done. Well, where we get all this other foolishness from in these churches? Cold guy. Cold guy. But when we crack open this book in Revelation, we don't have a clue. Well, yet, in that 21st chapter, the Bible said the tabernacle of God will be with us forever. No more tears, no more crying, no more pain, no more sorrow. Wait, God. Why? Because I told you in Matthew, well done, my good and faithful servant. Hold up, God. Hold up, God. Hold up. God, 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 God. They done lied to me so much in these churches, God, I don't know what to believe. What's really happening, God? Read it. Watch this. Come in, Ephesians. Matthew, I'll be back, baby. Come in, Ephesians. John, I need you right quick. But hold that, hold that thought, John. X, I got to get you too. But come here, come in, Ephesians. We the church. Okay, show it to me. Show it to me. I wait. Second Corinthians, I'm, I'm coming to get you. And I need you too, Second Corinthians. I need you for, for a minute. Ephesians, we're going to break that down. Give me one second, bib. Where I need you to be? Right here. Right, 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 right here. Watch this. Watch this. Let's start at Ephesians 5 and 23. It's recapping, bib. 5 and 23 says, For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. And he is the savior of the body. Who? Christ. Okay. 24. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Verse 25. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Verse 26. Watch this. That he might sanctify. Who? Christ. What? Set it apart. And cleanse it. What? The church. How you gonna cleanse it, Mike? How you gonna cleanse it? Watch this. With the washing of the word. With the washing of the water by the word. A outward, a outward profession of an inward confession. Water baptism. You know how he said, y'all want a sign, but the only sign y'all going to see is the sign of Jonah. How Jonah spent three days in the fish. So will, a, so will the Son of Man spend three days in the earth. Back to the death. Back to the resurrection. So now when we get baptized, which is the water baptism, we only showing forth that we believe in him. Who? The death, the burial, and the resurrection. So now, when we get in the book of Acts, we're really going to get a better understanding of everything. Why? Because John the Baptist, see, they got one. He coming, he going to baptize y'all, but he going to also baptize y'all with that fire. What takes us in 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, what breaks down the baptism of the Holy Spirit. What brings us back into the book of Acts, what shows us the first fruit of God, which is the Holy Spirit. Say, bro, what all this other stuff for in these churches? High five. High five your neighbor. Don't touch me. Turn to your neighbor and say, oh, neighbor, for what? What is all that for? Because it has nothing to do with the cleansing and the washing of the word. But watch this. Verse 27. That he might present it. Who? Christ. Present what? The church. That he might present it to himself. A glorious church. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. If we the church, like they've been saying, and how you gonna present us to yourself? But yet, come on, Jesus. Say, bro, I've been believing these people with this stuff. Jesus, give me a better understanding. Watch this. That he might present it to himself a glorious church. Not having spot or wrinkle. Or any such thing. But it should be holy 
and without blemish. What? The church. How? Because the church was always in Christ. For all things was created by God through Christ. This is why Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But yet you come in the church today and they're going to tell you, oh my, no, Father, my, you got to have faith. You can do all things. Say, bro, stop. It took Paul 13 years to get to the point where he was able to quote that. It took Paul 13 years where he was able to get to the point where he said, I can do all things. And I just come in here today. Don't beat me up with that one verse. I ain't there yet, baby. I am not there yet. This is why Paul was always writing letters to these people. You Galatians, who them betwixt you? Church, church at Philippians, man, come on, man. Y'all watch these dogs. He was always putting them on top of game. Come on, man. But y'all jibby jibby jab me to death. It don't even go like that. Come here, come here, come here, come here, Corinthians. I'll I, 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 I be back. I'll be back. Oh, no, no, no. So all men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that love his wife, loving himself. For no man ever hated his own flesh, but nourish. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Christ. No man never hated his own flesh. Go back to the beginning, Mike. When God created who? Man. And he went in the man and got who? The woman. When God created Christ, the church was already in Christ. This is why he had to go down and take sting out of debt and the victory out the grave. What happens next? Boom, the Holy Spirit, which is the first fruit of God. But yet we done played y'all so much. Every first year, you got to give your first fruit. How in the world I got to give you my first fruit when the first fruit is in me? You say we the church. Somebody been lying somewhere. Somebody been doing a bunch of lying about this book. Cold gang. Cold gang. Come here, Corinth. Come here, Corinth. I'll be back in feeding, baby. I need you. I want to use you. No, no, no. We're going to tie it together. Come, we're going to show them how to tie it together. Come here. Don't go nowhere. Don't go nowhere. Don't go nowhere. Don't go nowhere. Come here, current. I'm going to use second current. I'm going to use first current. We're going to tie this stuff in together. But they've been, God, say, God, on the real God, they got me messed up, God. I don't know. They just been telling a bunch of lies. I don't know what they've been doing, God. They just, they, I don't know, I don't know. You know Mike, though, I don't know, I don't know. God know, though, but watch this. Watch this. Let's fold the page. Let's, let's fold the page. First Corinthians, first Corinthians, three. Second Corinthians, six. Watch this. First Corinthians, four. Know you not that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Where does that say I'm the church? Where? 2 Corinthians 6 chapter verse 16 says, And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them. We're just temples. We're just temples. What takes me in Revelation, the second and third chapter? What happens in Revelation, the second and third chapter, Pastor Mike? In Revelation, the second and third chapter, tells us about the seven churches. Five of them churches had to repent. And he told them churches, if you didn't get together, get yourself together, I'm going to remove the candlestick. What is the candlestick? The spirit. So, how in the world are we the church? Can somebody please tell me? Say, bro. We're going to stop playing with the Spirit of God because that's all we've been doing. That's why the people are so stressed out. That's why the people are so worried. That's why the people lay there getting played and pimp. All you got to do is grasp that Holy Spirit. I guarantee you. I guarantee you. Let me see. Watch this, people. Watch this. It's a reason why I say don't get in your feelings, get in your Bible. Don't get in your feelings, get in your Bible. Watch this. 
between Malachi and Matthew. Malachi, Old Testament. Mel Matthew, New Testament. Between the Old and the New Testament, God was silent for 400 years. Go back in the book of Ezekiel. For God said he searched to and fro to find somebody to stand in the gap for him, and he couldn't find not one. Not one pastor, not one priest, not one bishop. He couldn't find one. Okay. So now God is silent for 400 years. Don't get in your feelings, get in your Bible. So God said, okay, I ain't going to get in my feelings. I'm going to get in my Bible. So God puts on a body. And then he come down here. Why? Because he couldn't find nobody else to do it. So he doing it himself. Watch this. So now, Jesus walking around doing everything he needed to do. I love when he fed the 5,000. Why? Because it is said that he had compassion on them. He had compassion on them. This is why he was always healing folks. Because of his compassion towards them. But then the time came, like as we just did last Sunday, where he got on that cross. That was his passion. Not compassion, but that was his passion. But watch this. For John, see, when they came up in the tomb, they seen that his clothes was folded. They seen that the thing that he wore on his head, the rag, was folded neatly. Why? Jesus understood. I ain't about to get in my feelings. I'm going to get in the Bible. In other words, Jesus took off his feelings. Why? Because after the resurrection, what he did? Told Mary, said, baby, don't touch me. Don't touch me. Stop clinging to me. I got to go. I got to go. But he told that old Dalton Thomas, touch me. Because you don't believe nothing. Touch me. I picked that concept up when I was in jail. One thing about being in prison, it'll teach you how to attach and deattach your feelings. Attach and deattach your feelings. Far too many of us get caught up in our feelings. Your feelings gonna send you to hell. I remember I told the brothers we was having a study. We was in the we was in the chapel, right? So I stood up in the middle of the study. I said, "Say, bro, I don't care about none of y'all feelings. I care about y'all souls. Stop getting in y'all feelings." And that's what's wrong with too many church folks. We get in our feelings. Your feelings gonna send you to hell. Stop getting in your feelings and get in your Bible. You know it's not right. You know. So, if I got a letter, throw it to the side. Pass the phone, I'm not gonna use it. Why? I'm in prison. I'm doing time. I have detached my feelings. I don't care about that outside, that, that world out there. I'm in here. So now, I know how to attach. I know how to detach my feelings. I'm not going to get caught up in my feelings. If I'm lying, come show me. That's all I say. Don't get in your feelings. You know they've been lying to you. You know it's not right. But instead of you going, doing like the Bereans said in the book of Acts, for the Bible said the Bereans searched the scriptures. And they searched the scriptures to make sure that everything that Paul said, it was accurate. But you know what you do? You get in your feelings. How you gonna get in your feelings? Jesus said, I gave one five one two one one. One five one two one one. It's my gift. It's my gift. So I'm gonna get you a gift. Oh, you gonna oh you got one and you took it and went and hid it. What part of the game is that? But we're not gonna talk to y'all like that. You know why? Because you're the church. <laughs> I will dwell in them, and I will walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Hold up, God. Hold up. You coming back for us? Are you coming back? Mike, watch this. My spirit came down there to fulfill you, right? You got that. Who you give glory to? You, God. Who gave you the gift? You, God. Who taught you the Bible? You, God. Okay. So when the time come, who I'm going to call? That spirit that was in you. Wow. I didn't come to destroy you, Mike. I came to fulfill you. What takes me back in the 25th chapter of Matthew? You got sheep and you got goat. And we all have a choice. Either we're going to do right by people or we're not.
just that simple, man. Church folks, like I told him Sunday, church folks are the worst folks. You know why? We believe anything. We know more what the pastor say than what the word of God say. Then we get in our feelings behind. For real? For real? For real? This is why I teach my people, get to know God and get to know God for yourself. Because see, once you connect with that spirit of God, see, once you realize how powerful you are in God, once you realize the God in you, oh my God, oh my God, come here, Revelation, come here. I, 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 I'm coming back. I'm coming back, Corinth. I, 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 I got. Oh, oh no, come here, Ephesians. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me drop this on you right quick. Come here, Ephesians. Ephesians three and nine says, "And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery." Stop. Wait. What you talking about, Paul? What you talking about? Bag it up, Mike. Ephesians three and two says, "If you heard of the dispensation of the grace of God." What? What is the dispensation, Mike? The dispensation is the grace of God, Mike. People, there are seven dispensations. I got the law, no problem. Got the covenant, no problem. All those are dispensations, right? But there are seven dispensations. Dispensations came in time, right? So now we are in that seven dispensation, which is the dispensation of grace, which is the church. Once the church is gone, the grace of God is gone, which takes us in the book of Revelation. Eighth chapter, last seventh seal, opens first trumpet judgment. Grace of God is gone, baby. Now you're going to send the two witnesses. They're going to kill the two witnesses, which is going to leave us with left is 144,000. Why? The grace of God is gone. God said that's enough. What takes us back in the sixth chapter of Revelation, and we look at that fifth seal for all of those who had martyred. Next week, we're going to get in the sixth seal. What happens with the sixth seal? God going to wreck this place. God going to wreck this place. Y'all want an event? I'm about, to, I'm about to shut it all down. The sixth seal, a great catastrophe. A great catastrophe. That seventh seal opens the first trumpet judgment. Why? God gave us the seventh dispensation, which is grace. Watch this. Watch this. Come back here, Paul. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Which is given to... You were, verse 3, how that by revelation, how that by revelation, how that by revelation, he made known unto me the mysteries. See how cold the game is? Don't read Revelation. It's scary. Don't read Revelation. It's going to drive you crazy. But Paul said, Paul said in Ephesians, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery. What, Mike? The mystery of the church. Why? Because if Satan, if that enemy would have knew about the church, he wouldn't have never crucified Christ. Hold up, baby. Hold up, God. God. So all the while, the real mystery is in the book of Revelation. Why you think the book closed? What I told Daniel. What I told Daniel in that 12th chapter when he asked me about the book. I said, say, Daniel, don't worry about that book, Daniel. The book is sealed, closed. Hold up. First seal, white horse, deception. Second seal, red horse, division. I don't know who worried, me or the devil, but it's going to be all right. Oh, Lord, what happened? Y'all going to be all right, babe. Don't panic. Don't panic. Don't never panic. Ain't nobody but the devil. Be falling off these tripods? I don't know. I know one thing. We're going to keep it rolling, babe. We're going to keep this thing going. If it falls, if it falls, we're going we to make it all right, babe. Don't panic. And guess what? You ain't gonna stop my teachings, devil. I ate the book. It's in my heart, babe. The word of God, like David said, I have hid in my heart. I don't need no book. I'm still running. Like I say, back to where I was at. Take us in the book of Revelation. We get in the book of Revelation, 
we're going to see how this thing is totally broken down. Now, if it's a mystery, God, why they never told us the mystery? Because, Mike, I never revealed it to them. It takes me to the 16th chapter of Matthew. What Peter said, you the Christ, the son of the living God. Flesh and blood did not reveal that to you, Peter. Anybody can give you some biblical interpretation, but can't know anybody give you revelation. And that's what's wrong. We haven't been getting no real revelation. Why? Because we don't know the book of Revelation. We don't know the book of Revelation. How many of y'all know that 22nd chapter, 21st chapter, the 20th chapter, the 19th chapter, the 18th chapter, the 17th, the 15th? How many of y'all know it? How many? How many of y'all know it? But yet, when the vaccine came, oh, that's the Antichrist. Really? Trump the Antichrist. Really? Really, people? Wow. And we God's people. We the church and we don't know nothing. I would never tell nobody I'm the church. Because that's not what the scripture is about. It's about the spirit of God that dwells within us. For Jesus told them, you don't need no man to teach you nothing. For the Holy Spirit going to teach you all things. And the Holy Spirit had three jobs to convict you of sin, to let you know about righteousness, and give you a better understanding of judgment. That was the Holy Spirit job. All that other stuff, blah, 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 pushing you down, putting hands on you, and you laying on the floor in the church for what? For what happened? Tell me what happened. You done went up there, and you done laid on that floor all that time for what? Cold game, cold game. That's why the devil punishing us the way he is, because we around here faking. We around here playing church. Show me that in the book. Show it to me in the book. In the name of Jesus, man, you go, 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 go. And you're going to lay down there. For what? What happened? What happened? Cold game. Cold game. Cold game. Cold game. Come here. How that by revelation he made known unto me the mysteries, the mysteries, as I wrote afore I in few words, whereby when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Come here, Corinth. Come here, Corinth. People, watch this. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 2 and 6, 1 Corinthians 2 and 6, how be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of the world, of this world, nor of the prince of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. In a mystery. Ain't no mystery. Ah, ain't no mystery. That's cold foolishness. This is how they've been playing us. Watch this. Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto his glory. Back to Ephesians. Christ said for his glory. Go in the ninth chapter of John. For the Bible said it was a man who was born blind. And the disciples asked, why he blind? Who sinned? Him or his parents? Because they were taught. And they believe that a person could sin before they were conceived. How much erroneous and bad teachers in the church today and we follow in that foolishness like they were, like they were. But Jesus told them, him, neither his parents sin, but that the glory, but that the glory of God may be revealed. What takes me all the way back in the beginning of this book. For he said, let there be light. And it wasn't until two days later when he created a moon, a sun, and stars. So where the light came from? Where did the light come from? Which well, takes me all the way back to the 22nd chapter of Revelation. He said you won't need no sun. You won't need no moon. You won't. Come in, Revelation. I'm coming back, Paul. I'm coming back. You don't know what he's talking about. Okay. Let's read it. Revelation 22. I'm going to start at verse 3. Revelation 22, verse 3. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. 
and they shall see his face and his name shall be in their foreheads. Why? Because we've been sealed to the day of redemption. We gods, he got us. All that old faking. Verse 5, and there shall be no night there. What you say, God? And there shall be no night there. What did you say, God? And there shall be no night there. And there no need of candles, neither light of the sun. For the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. It's been about his glory. It's been about his glory. From day one when he said, let there be light. So where y'all getting this other foolishness from? Because when I go into the 21st chapter, it says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. Verse 2. And I, John, saw the new holy city, new Jerusalem, coming down. Wait, God, they told me we was going up. Mike, Mike, the new Jerusalem going to come down. This is why I told Peter. And the gates of hell should not prevail. Because you wouldn't go into the 20th chapter of Revelation, you're going to set this whole place on fire. He going to set it on fire. And guess what? Here come the new Jerusalem. And the gates of hell will not be able to prevail what is going on. In oh, God, you gangster. But God didn't tell me like that. Coming down from out from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride. Stop. A door for her husband. Wait, God. Wait, 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 wait. If we the church... How this new Jerusalem going to come now as the bride? God, 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 God. Say, God, these jokers ain't been telling me none of this, God. God, help me with this one, God. Watch this. What takes me back to the 21st chapter, God breaks it down. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which has seven bold judgments, full of the last plagues. And I talked with me, saying, come hide her, and I will show thee the bride. I will show you the bride, the lamb's wife. Boy, they've been cold playing us in these churches. See this book of Revelation? Oh, my God. That foolishness they've been teaching in these churches? Oh, my God. So I'm like, God, hold up, God. Hold up. So, God, all that money I gave them talking about there was kingdom building. What kingdom they were building? Because the kingdom is already built. That's why Jesus told them in the prayer. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth. As it is already being done in heaven. Because the new Jerusalem is going to come. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh God. Somebody got to explain this here God. But you get mad with me. Why? Because I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you what the word of God say. How you gonna tell me you don't even know that one book? And all of it is right there in the book of Revelation. For Paul said in Ephesians, it is the revelation is mystery. What 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 John? You wrote it, John. Mike, I wrote what I saw. See them other 65 books? Mike, they were inspired by God and written by man. But see that 66 book, Mike? I wrote what I saw. All through the book, come and see. Come and see. When we do it in the second and third chapter, boom. Jesus said, say, John, write this down and give it to the churches. Why the churches don't know nothing about the seven churches? Why these churches... Don't know nothing about these seven churches. Say, bro, but you running around there talking about you got Holy Ghost power. Show it to me in this book. He said, the Holy Ghost shall come. And after you receive the Holy Ghost, after you should have power. Takes us back in John. When he blew on them, that was temporarily. Why? Because second acts had not came yet. Takes us back to Joel. When he said, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. God, how you going to pour out your spirit upon all flesh when it was only 120 in the upper room? Mike, 
That was the beginning, baby. That was the beginning. Them 120, keep reading. Because when you get in the 8th chapter of Acts, who it went to? The Samaritans. When you get in the 10th chapter of Acts, who it went to? The Gentiles. Why? Because the Canadian was the first Gentile to receive the Holy Spirit. Hold up, God. God, they ain't been breaking this book down to me like this, God. They just been running cold game. Mike, it's all there in the book. Wow. 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 Come in, Fiji. Paul that thought revelation. Paul that thought, watch this. Back to Ephesians. Whereby when you heard many, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Verse 5. Which in other ages was not made known. Unto the son of man, unto the son of men. And it is now revealed unto the holy apostles and prophets by the Holy Spirit. Hold up, God. Hold up, God. If you reveal that to these prophets and these apostles, these people today running around there talking about the apostles, why are they not teaching this to us, God? If you revealed it to them, why they don't know it, God? Back to 1 Corinthians. Come back here, Corinthians. Don't run away. No, we, we got to give it to them like God said, give it to them. Verse 8, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Had they would have known what, Mike? About the church. If they would have known about the first fruit, which is the church, they would have never crucified. Mike, that's why in the book of Exodus, 50 days after they came out of bondage, I made them my first born. Who? Israel. Why? Because I couldn't make them my firstborn while they were in bondage. So after I brought them out of bondage, after Moses came out of, with the law, I say now they are my firstborn. And their job, Mike, was to tell the world about the living God, which was their God. Oh, that's how all this goes. Yes, because I promised it with Abraham. Oh. Didn't I tell Abraham, say, bro, come from up under your people, bro. Before I wreck this place again, come from up under your people, Abraham, and I will make you a father of many nations, and I will bless those who bless you, and I will make your name great. Is not that what I told the Abraham? So if I go before Abraham, I'm going to look at Noah. I go before Noah, I'm going to look at Enoch. For Enoch walked with God, and Enoch disappeared. Enoch never died. My, I had to show that fool that I got debt covered when Cain killed Abel. But it wasn't until whoop, the second Adam came that he was able to go down and take the sting out of death and the victory out the grave. So between that time, all the way to that time, God, Mike, it was a mystery. This is why Paul is saying, I, now the mystery has been revealed to him. Who was writing about the church? Paul. Who jumped out starting the church? Peter and John. First Corinthians 2 and 9 says, but as it is written, I have not seen, ear have not heard, neither have it entered into the heart of man. Don't ever, I'm talking to my drop in the net members and friends, don't ever let nobody tell y'all that foolishness. You know why? The next verse, the very next verse, verse 10 says, but God has revealed them. Man, what you saying? Say, bro, Mike, I didn't reveal that stuff to y'all. So a uh, eye have not seen, stop lying. A uh, ear have not heard, stop lying. Need to have it into, stop lying. Verse 10 says, but God has revealed it. Not revealed. Revealed with ED. 
But God has revealed them to us. What? The mysteries. By his spirit. For the spirit searches all things. Yeah, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of a man which is in him. Even so the things of God knoweth no man, no man, but the spirit, but the spirit of God. Oh my God. So that's why y'all running around here pouring all this oil everywhere. <laughs> For what? For what? You're running out there, uh, getting pushed down on the ground. You're laying on the floor in the church. For what? You're running around. Sh -j 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 For what? Come in first, Corinth. Come in first, Corinth. To me, it's very disrespectful. Watch this. First Corinthians 14 says, How is it then, brethren, when you come together, every one of you have a song, a doctrine, have a tongue, have revelation, and interpretation. Let all things be done unto edifying. Let all things be done unto edifying. Verse 27. If a man speak in an unknown tongue, if a man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two or at the most by three. And by and that by course, and let one interpret. Really, bro? Really? Watch what Paul says. But if there be no interpreter, you don't know what them people saying. You what what did, what did they say? What did they say? Faking like they hold it. Watch this. But if there be no interpreter, if there be no interpreter, let him keep silent. Let him keep silent. Let him keep silent in the church. And let him speak to himself and to God. And the Lord says, y'all falling for that foolishness. Paul says, say, bro, go over there with all that noise. Keep that between you and God. Come back, Ephesians. Come back, Ephesians. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this, people. Ephesians, that's when he came up out that grave. That's when he came up out that grave. But yet, oh, he rose. Red. Really, bro? Really? Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Ephesians 4 and 3 says, In devouring to keep unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. Verse 4. There is one body and one spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling. Wait, back to Matthew, the 25th chapter. Many are called. Watch this. Verse 5. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Verse 6. One God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all, who? The Father, the one baptism, the one faith, the one Lord. Watch this, verse 7. But unto every one of us, but to every one of us, but to every one of us is given grace, grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. All about what you're saying. Every last one of us have the, the gift of grace. That's what Paul said. What's grace, Mike? That last dispensation. What is grace, Mike? The church. What is the church, Mike? The fruit, the first fruit of God. What's the first fruit? 
that spirit that he said he would pour out upon all flesh. Oh, gang. Watch this. Wherefore he said, Ephesians 4 and 8, wherefore he said, when he ascended up on high, when did he ascend, Mike? In the book of Acts. Right after he finished dealing with Peter now. What? Yes. That's why when he came out that grave, he took his feelings and set him right there. Mary, don't touch me. Stop clinging to me, baby. I told y'all, Peter, when I was sitting at that table, I got to go. I told y'all another comforter was going to come. I got to go. But in the church, call on Jesus. Jesus said, what you calling me for? What you calling me for? Y'all can't hear? I left you the comforter. The comforter. Call the comforter. You need the comforter. Watch this. Wherefore he said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts and gave gifts and gave gifts and gave gifts, and gave gifts unto men. Go on 1 Corinthians the 12th chapter. Some miracles, some interpretation of tongues, some speaking in tongues, some faith, some this. Gifts for believers. Go on 1 Corinthians the 7th chapter. Gifts to do the work. Right here in the Ephesians. Watch this. Watch this. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first? Into the lower parts of the earth. That's what happened the Saturday. That's what happened that Saturday. Before he rose on that Sunday. He went into the lower parts of the earth. This is why when he say he rose. He rose with all power in his hand. But we don't tell you that. We ain't going to tell you all that. He rose. Okay. He rose. Now what? Now what? You done told me that. The year before that. The year before that. The year before that. The year before that. Now what? Come on people. On some real talk. Watch this. Watch this. Now that he ascended, what it what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? That he descended is the same also that ascended up far above the heavens, that he might feel what might? That he might feel what? That he might fulfill all things. But they say just pray. Pray God gonna heal the land. Pray, pray, God gonna heal the land. Show it to me in this book. Jesus said, I didn't come to destroy the law, I came to fulfill it. Right here in Ephesians, he's talking about fulfilling. Going that sixth chapter of Revelation, God said, Y'all chill out for a minute. Everything ain't been fulfilled yet. We don't know the plan, the will, or nothing of God. But we're going to listen to somebody in the pool pit tell us to pray fast. For what? For what? God's will is going to be done, people. Whether we like it or not. Watch this. That he might fulfill all things. Verse 11. And he gave some apostles. Huh? And he gave himself some apostles. And he gave himself some apostles. Some prophets. Some evangelists. Some pastors. Some teachers. For the perfecting. For the equipping. Of the saints. For the equipping. For the equipping. For the e I'm an apostle. Okay, so what? He gave some, some prophets, some teachers, some pastors, some evangelists for the equipping of the saints. So that you all would know better. So that you all would have a better understanding. So that you all would be well equipped. For the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. For the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all, till we all, till we all 
not just no pastor, not just the prophet, not just the bishop, till we all, till we all, till we all, Paul said, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. Who is the Son of God? You tell me. Who is the Son of God? You've been in church. <laughs> you go to church. You read your Bible. Who is the Son of God? And the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect, unto a perfect, which is a mature man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. What you know about Christ? Because guess what? When he was in that grave, he took them clothes, he folded them up, he set them clothes down, he walked out of that tomb. Once he checked Peter, he checked Peter twice. Say, Peter, you love me? You love me, Peter? You love me? Peter got in his feelings. Say, bro, you keep asking me, do I love you? Why you keep asking? Say, Peter, well, get in your feelings, Peter. Get in your Bible. Do you love me? If you love me, feed my sheep. Peter got so deep in his feelings, Peter said, say, Jesus, well, what about him? Now he won't snitch. Now he won't snitch. But what about him? What he going to do? Jesus said, say, Peter, is it your business? If he'd stay here till I come back, is it your business? Do what I called you to do, Peter. You worrying about John. I got something for John. John going to write that book. John going to write that book of Revelation. Don't worry about John. Do what I called you to do. This is why when we get into Acts, we're going to see how strong Peter was. Boom. Get into Acts. Then you're going to see. See Acts? And that foolishness we're doing in the church today, it don't even add up. It don't even add up. So my thing is, say, God, on some real talk, who taught them how to have church like that? Because I know God when I go back and I study history, in the Baptist church, we walk out the church. You still see people do that today. Why you do that? Why? Why? Do you know why you do that? See, back then, we had some real Nat Turners. We had some real men. See, back then, Master always wanted a head count. He always wanted a head count to make sure we wasn't doing no uprising in the church. Making sure we wasn't about to start no revolution in the church. So whenever somebody left out the church, they did this. I'm leaving, boss. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. And y'all still doing it today and don't even know why. <laughs> Man. Say, bro. They have co-played us in these churches. You know why? They went to his Bible college. They went to his seminary. You know who they are? So they can teach us what they've been teaching us. Why we don't know what they know in that church over there. That's why I thank God I ain't go to none of them Bible college. I thank God I ain't go to seminary. I thank God I ain't go to none of that. You know why? They would have taught me what they wanted me to teach y'all. That's why all of them talk the same way. That's why all of them saying the same thing. And that's why not one of them could run out there and say, Pastor Mike, that's not right. Because ain't nobody taught them better. This is why you got to get to know God and get to know God for yourself. As I say, you will never learn God from no pulpit. You learn God from experiences. You learn God from experiences. Because if I take it in that, in that 16th chapter of Mark, Jesus says, say, bro, I done walk with y'all. I done talk with y'all. And y'all still don't know. 
Come here, Mo. Come here, Mo. I like when they look crazy. It feeds. I appreciate you. We, we coming. It just, it just, it just. It's... Say, bro, you either know all sixty six books or you don't. We gonna run all sixty six books. Come here, come here. Watch this. Watch this. Mark sixteen, right? Mark sixteen. I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna start at ten. Watch this. And she went and told them who Mary that had been with him. As they mourn and weep. Who? The disciples. But dude told him he was going to rise. Dude told him in three days. Said, I'm coming back. Watch this. Verse 11. And they, when they had heard that he was alive and had not been seen of her, believed not. Said, bro, I done fed these people. I done walked on water. I done opened blinded eyes. I stopped up in loose tongues, tongues. Called the name the wall. Called Lazarus out the grave. And y'all still don't believe me? And y'all still don't believe me? Same thing today. Same thing today. Watch this. Watch this. After that, he appeared in another form unto two men, unto two of them, as they walked and went into the country. And they went and told it unto the resident, need to believe they them. Say, bro, what's the matter gonna start believing on this dude when he start really teaching us the truth? Watch this. Verse Mark 16 and 14 says Afterward He appeared unto the 11 Why? Judas dead Instead of 12 it's 11 Why? Judas dead Afterward he appeared unto the 11 And they sat at me And they sat at me And rebuked them With their unbelief and hardness of heart. Because they believe not. Because they believe not. Because they believe not them which had seen him after he was risen. I took you in John, right? In John, Jesus blew on them. And they received the spirit. That's what John said. And Mark, he said they were sitting around eating, right? So my member called me and said, Pastor Mike, help me with that. Because somebody, I was talking with somebody and they told me, Jesus, when he was sitting at the table eating with them, he blew on them and they received the spirit. I said, well, okay, where's that? Then it took some of Mark and some of John. Some of Mark and some of John. Cool guy. This is why, people, you have to be very, 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 very careful. But when he blew on them, they received the same spirit that they received when he sent the 72 out. They received the same spirit that they were receiving in the, book, in, in the Old Testament. For the spirit of God will come up on them. This is why Samson said, God, God. God, if you allow me to have my strength one more time so I can avenge them. Samson got his strength, pushed them pillars. All the people that was in the auditorium over Samson, it is said Samson killed more people, more people that day than his whole time. But you know what they're going to say? Well, Judas committed suicide. Samson did too. Now what? Now what? Samson man commit suicide? Well, what the world did he do? He killed himself. Judas killed himself. But we run out there. Judas commit suicide. Samson did the same thing. Now what? Say, bro. Done. Done. Go and go to the funeral. My dude rose with all power. And that power has been given has been given to us. Jesus is not about to come back for us. God is gonna crack that sky open, just like he did in the 13th chapter of Matthew, when God spoke. Jesus said, Y'all heard that, huh? They thought it was done thunder. And he heard some other things. Jesus said, He didn't do that for me. He did that for y'all. Because another time gonna come when he's gonna crack that sky open and he's gonna speak. And the Bible says, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. 
and all of us who are remain and still alive shall be caught up. So when Jesus coming back, say nothing about Jesus. Well, he gonna resurrect us up, Mike. When he stood in that graveyard with Lazarus, he said, I am the resurrection. That's why in the 15th chapter of John, he said, I'm the vine, you the branch. If you abide in me, I'm abiding you. We won. When I rose, the day you accept me as your Lord and Savior, you was resurrected. That's why Paul would always write about how we died in Christ, though we still live. So, once again, <laughs> what's happening with this resurrection? Cold gang, cold gang, cold gang. But that 19th chapter of Revelation, see that 19th chapter? He gonna wreck this place. That will be his second coming. That will be his second coming. For he told the church at Philadelphia, y'all will not see the hour of tribulation. Y'all will not see the hour of tribulation. My raptor's gonna be raptured up, baby. Y'all gonna be gone. Daddy gonna come get y'all. Wait, 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 Pastor Mike. I told y'all, them last 365 days, God was bringing us through detoxification of all that foolishness we done learned in the church. See, these next 365 days, God taking us to a whole nother level. So we go in Revelation, okay, now we're gonna say, okay, wait, God. Now you know, okay, 19 chapter, you're coming back, right, Jesus? Okay, I got that. Okay, but now I go back to John. I got the resurrection in the ninth chapter of John, okay. Now when I go in, and when I go in these letters that Paul wrote, I, I need to really tear down Ephesians to get a better understanding. Why? Because I gotta go in that first Corinthians, because first Corinthians give me the cold game. But I'm gonna go in, go in Philippians, because Philippians broke it down a little bit. But see that first and second Thessalonians? Let us know about the return of Christ. We'll take us in John. John wrote about the deity of Christ. John was always on top of game. Not like Matthew, not like Mark, not like Luke. The writings of John was always about the deity of Christ. That's why it was so easy for John to write the book of Revelation. He already had insight, knowledge of the Lamb, the Lamb, the Lamb, the Lamb. Takes us back in the book of Exodus when he killed what? The Lamb. And did what? Eat the Lamb. But save the blood and put it on the doorpost. Hold up, God. My, all this stuff started when I told that serpent, I'm going to put intimate between thou seed and that woman's seed. It will bruise thou head and thou shall bruise his heel. So he bruised his heel on Calvary. See in Revelation, that 19th chapter, Jesus is going to bruise his head because he's going to tear his kingdoms down. So, God, why did you just tell me this in church, God? I would have really, really wanted to. I, God, now see this type here right here, God? Now I got something to look forward to, God. Now I got you, God. Now, God, I got you now, babe. That stuff they was talking about. Oh, just sit right there. You're going to die. You're going to go to heaven and you're just going to worship God all day. Really? Really, bro? Really? So I'm gonna sit here for 30 years, 40, 50 years, waiting to die, to go to heaven? I say, bro, can you please give me some more better than that? It's all Bible. It's all right there in the book. It's all right there in the book. See these next 365 people? We're gonna go back in them seven seals. We're gonna work them seven seals all the way down. We're gonna go all through the Old Testament and tie in them seven seals. We're gonna go back and deal with them seven churches. The church of Ephesus, the church of Smyrna, the church of Pergamos, the church of Laodicea, the church of Thyteria, the church of Philadelphia. We're gonna, we gonna work all seven churches. Come off them seven churches, then we're gonna get in them trumpet judgments. Come off them trumpet judgments, then we're gonna get into them bold judgments. Come off of them bold judgments, then we're gonna get a better understanding of that second death. Come off that second death, then we're going to look at that first resurrection. Wait, stop. What you mean the first resurrection? During the millennium, baby. Ain't that what the scripture says? The first resurrection. Then we're going to deal with that great right throne. What? My, say, bro. See that Bible? I'm talking about all 66 books. I ain't talking about just Matthew, Mo, Luke, and John. I'm not talking about the 5, the 12, the 5, 5, 12. 
Pastor Mike, what the Bible, the 12, the 5 by 12? I'm not just talking about the five books of Moses. I'm not going to get into the 12 books of history. I'm not going to deal with the, 12, the five books of, 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 of poetry, Psalms, and, and, and Job, and Ecclesiastes. I'm not going to just deal with the five books, the five major books of prophecy, Ezekiel, Isaiah, Lamentation, Dan. Come on, man. It's a whole lot of stuff going on in these books. I brought up the book of Nahum yesterday. Then people say, Pastor Mike, I ain't never heard of no book of no Nahum. Okay, go back six months. Came out of Obadiah. Pastor Mike, I never heard of the book of Obadiah. It's 12 minor prophets. Oh, they just dare to be there? Zechariah tell us about Revelation. Hubaka tell us about what's going to happen. Nahum tell us about the fall of Nineveh. But takes us in the book of Revelation, the 17th chapter. That's why it tells us that it was eight. Then it was seven. Then it was five. Then it was one. Then the one that wasn't, that's going to be. That's how we get the fall of these kingdoms. Which leave us three. Which takes us back and says that it was three. Then it was seven. Then it was five. Hold up, Pastor Mike. Because five of them kingdoms are going to fall. How did they fall? Go into your minor prophets. Give you a better understanding of the 17th chapter of Revelation will let us know about the Antichrist, the one that's going to come in power. How? Off of the 13th chapter of Revelation. Because what he did in the 11th chapter of Revelation, when he killed the two witnesses. But Daniel been putting us on the top of game. Daniel told us about abolition. Oh, we're going to get into that. We're going to get into that. We're going to get into that. The desolation. We're going to get it. What you say, God? That's enough. You know, you be turning the book, babe. I'm about to get to this funeral, y'all. Love y'all, babe. See y'all tomorrow, 11 o'clock in church. 11 o'clock in church. I don't want to be late. I, I hope these people don't leave me. Better man, love y'all, babe. One thing about it, we ain't mad with nobody. We ain't upset with nobody. For as he said in the 11th chapter of Mark, while you standing praying, forgive. You want God to forgive you? Forgive them. Don't be mad with nobody. Don't be upset with nobody. Let me tell you something. This stuff been planned out by the devil. But God have his plan. The Bible says he won't hold no good thing. He won't hold no good thing. He won't hold no good thing from us. But you know what they say? Well, you can't question God. Show me that in the book. I'm not questioning his authority. He said he that lack wisdom, let him ask. You have not because you ask not. Not for no house, not for no call, not for no spouse, not for no money. Wisdom. For Paul was always talking about wisdom. Just imagine if he had wisdom. <laughs> or she had some wisdom. You wouldn't be running around here cutting a fool like that. <sighs> Gotta go check on Miss O. Make sure Miss O all right. She lost her sister early part of the week. God is good, people. God is good. It's 66 books. We ain't gonna never run out. Every day. We gonna be here every day. We ain't gonna never run out. Come tomorrow, I don't know what God gonna have me to preach on. I ain't about to be writing no sermon now and be reading all of nothing. No, no. He gave me a gift. My up. Eat the book. I ate the book. So I just stand in front of you and just run the book. What you say, God? God said, shut your mouth up and get to that field. <laughs> That's my dude. That's my dude. That's my dude. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that the one day with the Lord is a thousand years, a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away, with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also, and the works that are therein, shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of person are you to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hastening to the coming day of God, where the heavens being on fire should be dissolved and elements shall melt with fervent heat? Nevertheless, we are calling to his promise, look for a new heaven and a new earth, where indwelleth righteousness, wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that you may be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless, and account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, 
even as our beloved brother Paul also called to the widow, given unto him as written unto you, as also in all his letters, speaking in them of these things which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned, unstable, wrestle as they do the other scriptures unto their own destruction. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing that you know these things, be for be well, lest you also be led away with the error of the wicked. Fall from your own steadfastness, but grow in grace and the wisdom and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Father, my love y'all. Y'all a blessing, man. God give it to me, I give it to you. I don't owe you no lie, you don't owe me no lie. I can only give it to you the way he has given it to me. No man is that smart. No man is that clever. No man can every day. Mike, get up. Where I'm going, God? Go in Ephesians. Go in Corinthians. Go in Galatians. Go in Revelation. Okay, God, let's go. I gave you the gift. I gave you the gift to do it. Use it. The man had five, he had five more. The man that had two, he made two more. So as God gave me the gift, I share with you all. I share with you all. I share with you all. Why? Takes me all the way back to John 15 and 16. For he said, John 15 and 16, Mike, you didn't choose me. Mike, you didn't choose me. I chose you. And I ordained you that you should go forth and that you should bear fruit and that your fruit shall remain. So I'm just bearing fruit, babe. I'm just bearing fruit. Why? I didn't choose God to do this. I didn't beg God to do this. I didn't make no vision board to do this. I didn't make no plans to do this. I ain't do none of that. He said, Mike, bring your butt here. What's up, God? Handle that. Bam. That's that. That's that. That's that. So to come off like this dude, ain't happening. To come off like her, ain't happening. I'm doing it how God gave it to me to do. Why? Because we living in a different time, dealing with some whole different situations. Say, bro, see that old church stuff? Say, bro, ain't ready for this new devil. It is not ready for this new devil. Grandma! Appreciate y'all, baby. Y'all did a wonderful job. See that old, see that old prosperity? Psst, come on, man. I was talking to somebody yesterday. I said, now, now time, now time, I never told nobody to go to church. When you go to church, peep gang, I'm going to tell you that. Now time that I never told nobody not to give. I said, no such thing as a 10%. My members pay tithes. My members give offerings. They do that, but they know the real why. It comes from the heart. Get to know God and get to know God for yourself. What he's talking about, say, bro, that's them. That's them. We don't even know what they're talking about. Why? We don't roll like that. One faith, one Lord, one baptism, one spirit. What they talking about? I don't know. I ain't into big and big. I'm a grown man. I like I big and you for some money. I ain't about to do that. No, sir. You know what to do. Do it. You don't need me to convince you to do it. And I don't need to convince myself that you can do it. That's between you and God. That's why you get to know God and get to know God for yourself. Why? Because God said, I know the plan that I have for your life. What you say, God? Mike, I know the plan I have for your life. But God, they told me, boil up. I know the plan. God, but they told me that. Boil up. God, but they told me. I ain't about to play with him. But God, they talk me. Say it one more time. Why would I do to you? All right, God. You running them there talking about what the prophet said. But the prophet said this. What did God say? What did God say? Do the prophet know the plan that God has for your life? How the prophet know and you don't know? It's your life. Cool guy. Cool guy. <laughs> All right. Y'all have a blessing. Let me get to this funeral. I'm already late. Can't go see a man by the meal, so I guess I'll go praise the Lord.